Hello and welcome. I'm Yasmin Menon, the Director of Production here at Ericsson Translations. And I'm Will Locke, Director of Sales. Will, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Today we have um, our topic of discussion is language accessibility. Please describe a little bit about what is being done to provide content and make it accessible for people with special needs and uh, disabilities. Um, great question. A lot of our clients, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Art Institute of Chicago, the Getty, um, what the trend is they've been repurposing standard features like the audio tour um, into um, accessibility um, features for their visitors. For instance, um, they're, um, for visitors who are hard of hearing, um, visitors who are uh, blind or have low vision, they're, they're taking their transcripts, which are also in multiple languages, and offering those to visitors with accessibility issues. So they're repurposing um, these standard features and um, offering them to um, their visitors with accessibility needs. That's really great, and that's really taking the content which is already available and then repurposing it for people with disabilities. But what are institutions and organizations doing to help uh, make their content for people with disabilities? Um, another good question. We had a great program that we did with the Museum of Modern Art, MoMA, um, a while back, which was called Meet Me, um, MoMA Guide for People with Alzheimer's. And from the start, this was a dual language program in English, and there was also a version in Spanish. It was fully developed. It has PDFs, it has lesson programs, it has subtitled videos, all for people who have Alzheimer's who want to visit the museum. Um, it's sort of what we call um, double duty accessibility because you're offering it to people um, who are Spanish speakers and also people who have Alzheimer's. So you're hitting two audiences with that. Um, one other example I can bring up is a little further afield outside the museum sector. There's a program we did with Mass General Hospital and Autism Speaks. And um, we translated a program for visitors um, of children with autism to the hospital into multiple languages, into uh, Arabic, Vietnamese, and Spanish. And that's a really interesting program that I think museums might want to jump into. Um, that really sounds great. And it says very loud and clearly, all are welcome. We want you to understand what we are offering you very clearly. The data is also probably pretty stra staggering with um, what we can learn about the demographics in this country. Yes. Give, us, uh, give us a little overview of that. There's a lot of data thanks to the good old census. Um, for example, um, there are 240 million English speakers in the home in the United States. We know that. Um, there are 40 million Spanish speakers in the home in the United States. You drill down a little further, um, about 15 languages down the list, and you've got 470,000 speakers of Urdu in the home. Um, 470,000 versus 40 million seems quite small, but then you realize, wait, 470,000 people is bigger than the city of Omaha, Nebraska. Um, also 160,000 speakers of Navajo at home. Really amazing and really I feel very proud to be American when I realize how multilingual this country is. Yeah, um, that's what we love. <laughs> that's what we love. I'm going to um, geek out on you a little bit more. There's one other um, stat, courtesy of the census, the diversity per metropolitan area. So, city like New York, melting pot, Big Apple, Statue of Liberty, 20 million people in the greater metro area. There are 200 languages spoken in this city. That's pretty amazing. It's not necessarily surprising, though, because it's New York. Um, what's fascinating to me is um, much smaller cities like Seattle, which is 5 million people in the metropolitan area, still has this 170 different languages spoken at home. So even in the smaller cities in this country, there's great uh, lingual diversity. It really is, and uh, it's great to be part of all of this. Thank yes. you so much for all your insight. Thank you. And until next time. Until next time. Bye-bye. Keep translating.